What happens when the cold gets so vicious it stops caring about your gear, your training, or your pride? When the temperature drops so brutally that your matches freeze solid, your lighter fractures like glass, and even your breath turns to ice before it leaves your lips? That wasn't theory for Cold War units stationed in the Arctic. That was Tuesday. And yet they still built roaring fires in storms that could kill a man in minutes. And here's the twist. They didn't do it with magic tools, fancy fuel, or miracle gadgets. They used chemistry, grit, and a technique so reliable it became the quiet lifeline of soldiers, spies, pilots, and polar researchers. It's a trick that still works today, and if you're serious about survival, you should know it cold. Let's dig into the Cold War's most overlooked fire-starting method, the one that works when absolutely everything else fails. The Arctic didn't care who you were. During the height of Cold War tension, the far north wasn't empty space on a map. It was a strategic frontier. America had early warning stations in Greenland. The Soviet Union built remote radio outposts deep in Siberia, and everyone who stepped into that frozen labyrinth faced the same merciless reality. Traditional fire-starting tools collapsed under Arctic conditions. Matches shattered. Lighter fuel wouldn't vaporize. Flint could spark, but couldn't always coax frozen tinder into flame. When the temperature hits 40 below, the rules change. So soldiers turned to a forgotten piece of field chemistry that didn't depend on warmth, oxygen-rich air, or delicate gear. A method that creates its own heat from the inside out. The method had existed in 19th century survival literature, but the Cold War sharpened it into an art. American and Soviet units rediscovered a reaction known informally as the chemical spark a fire starter powered not by friction, but by chemistry. The magic duo, potassium permanganate and glycerin, two mundane substances, stable, easy to store, impossible to freeze into uselessness, and when combined, they produce a delayed but powerful exothermic reaction that heats itself until it bursts into flame. It's elegant, it's simple and it's deadly effective in cold that would kill a lighter on contact. Why the chemistry works even when nature doesn't? Potassium permanganate is a strong oxidizer. Think of it as carrying bottled oxygen inside its crystals. Glycerin, on the other hand, is an organic fuel whose molecules react violently when an oxidizer breaks them apart. Drop glycerin onto a small mound of potassium permanganate and nothing happens, at first. The cold slows the reaction, giving the mixture a 20 to 30 second delay. But then it begins. Heat builds, smoke rises. Suddenly a purple flame erupts strong enough to ignite damp bark, cotton lint or greasy cloth. Cold doesn't shut this reaction down. Wind doesn't stop it. Snow doesn't even matter because the reaction creates more than enough heat to push past moisture and ice. This was gold in the Arctic. Reliable flame without striking, scraping, or relying on fragile fuel. Training logs from the era explain the method almost casually as if it were common knowledge among operatives. Soviet instructors would demonstrate on snow-covered ground to prove how unstoppable the reaction was. A soldier would grind the potassium permanganate into fine powder. Form a small mound. Press a slight crater into the top. Add a few drops of glycerin, just enough to pool. Then stand back. Smoke, crackle, flame. For covert operations, the method had an extra advantage. It was silent, no metallic scrape, no spark flash, a delayed flame that appeared as if summoned.
Now let's get practical, because this isn't a historical parlor trick. It still works flawlessly, and both chemicals are easy to obtain. Potassium permanganate is sold at farm supply shops as a disinfectant. Glycerin sits on pharmacy shelves as a moisturizer. To recreate the method safely, here's how seasoned Cold War trainers taught it. Prepare a flat, dry, stable surface, rock, metal plate, or a patch of packed snow. Pour out about a teaspoon of potassium permanganate and shape it into a small cone. Make a tiny indentation on top for the glycerin. Add a few drops, no more than a quarter teaspoon. Step back and give it half a minute. You'll see white smoke, then a sizzling purple flame. Feed it immediately with tinder. Birch bark, char cloth, cotton lint, or thin wood curls work best. In emergencies, Cold War survivalists improvised. They didn't always have pure glycerin, so, well, they used medical-grade glycol from antifreeze. First aid kits of the era often included potassium permanganate tablets for cleaning wounds. Crush one tablet, add glycol, and you had a fire starter even in hostile weather. That adaptability is why this trick became a quiet legend among Arctic operatives. The Arctic swallowed gear. It ruined radios, froze batteries, cracked tools, and honestly humbled every piece of modern equipment. Yet soldiers still needed fire, to melt snow, to cook, to dry clothing, to keep tools from freezing into useless lumps of metal. Fire wasn't optional. Fire was survival. And chemical ignition became the dependable fallback when everything else tapped out. NATO manuals in the late 1950s even recommended variations of the method under emergency Arctic fire techniques. Its strength wasn't just heat. It was predictability, control, silence. Reliability. For modern survivalists, the lesson is identical. Knowledge beats gear. Chemistry beats cold. And the simplest tools, the ones you can carry for years without worry, are the ones that save you when nature stops playing fair. The Cold War left behind more than political tension. It left behind hard-earned survival knowledge carved from some of the harshest environments on Earth. And this chemical fire starter is one of those rare techniques that still deserves a place in every serious survival kit. If you want more deep dives into the forgotten methods that kept soldiers, explorers and operatives alive when the world went cold, make sure you subscribe to History HQ. Share this with fellow survivalists and history buffs, and keep the old knowledge alive.